Welcome back everybody to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. So guys, I just got back from the Dreadlands. Yeah, and uh, we are cooking up a whole bunch of dreaded shard of abyssal night. We were able to farm that really easily now that we have looting 20. Uh, the big, uh, I don't know what they're even called. They're like zombie looking things. They drop armor too. So we've been collecting a whole lot of the dreaded abyssal night armor. So really what's going on here if something happens to our armor uh let's see yeah our next one is to make well no it was this one right here this abyssal knight armor dreaded abyssal knight if we were to lose anything beyond this point we can always go back and make more armor because yeah we can repair it and then use this to craft so it's kind of like a checkpoint, if you will, halfway through the armor creation period that we are able to get that stuff. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we are collecting a whole bunch of those dreadium ingots, and there are dreadium seeds, I do believe. Seed, if I spell it correctly. So I think this is probably going to make the most sense for us to do. Um, if we can do this, I believe we have Supremium Essence. I think that has dropped from like the end dragon or maybe maybe the wither boss or something we've never done a tier 5 seed to date i do not believe let's go back and take a look real quick at the different seeds yeah so we have supremium crafting uh we haven't unlocked that because we have to make the seed first of all but yeah this would be our first one if we do that and i think that's going to make sense for us to do because going and farming those monsters isn't exactly the most fun thing ever. So if we do a tier five seed, if we tell it to craft it, uh, actually, okay, so it says we have four of it available, but then we got, okay, yeah, right, it's gotta make all the different tier of the seeds. Okay, that should be fine. We got all of that stuff together. It's just gonna take a little bit of time for that crafting to happen, but yeah, this is like, I think the more expensive thing, and we already have those ready to go. How many of those do we have? Supremium. Oh, we only have one remaining. Okay. So that's not super great. I thought we had a lot more than that, but apparently not. Yeah, we're going to have to start looking at farming up uh, Essence at some point, I do believe. Let's get back to this. So the tier 5 seed. So this one's done. And we need, what is that, 12 Ender Ingots? Ender Ingot. So we can craft that up. Okay, so that's easy enough. Oop, and that was done right away. And beyond that, we need four Supremium. Okay, so we are going to have to craft that. And then we're going to need eight of the blocks of Dreadium. I assume we craft those over here. Oop, things happen. So let's combine those together. That should be a little over eight, I think. Okay, so there's that. And probably stop this now. All right, so we have the eight of those. We had only one Supremium, but we can craft up three more, possibly. Yeah, it looks like we have everything to do that, so that's not really a huge issue. Thanks to our big brother, Woot Farm, we have all these different ingots coming in automatically, which is great. Okay, so now that we have all of that, we should be able to make this particular seed that's just done on the advanced crafting table. And that will provide us with a Dreadium Essence, which eight of those turns into two ingots. But that means we don't have to use a Transmutator anymore. We don't have to go to the Dreadlands to kill those monsters anymore. This is just going to be so much nicer overall. Uh, and this is just about done. It's getting there. And done. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so we have all of that stuff. So now if we come over here, do that and that. Boom. It's actually kind of nice that we don't have to do Batania or Astral Sorcery to make these seeds. We can just craft it directly on this crafting table. I like that. Okay, well, the next step is I need to take these seeds and turn those into 10, 10, 10. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I guess we can get rid of this transmutator. I put this over here so it'd be affected by our tick acceleration, which it was, and that made smelting it <laughs> go that much quicker. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and 10, 10, 10 these seeds, and then we should be able to look at making this different armor. Uh, also, I was kind of looking ahead a bit here, if we go back to the quest section. And after that is the Boron Nitrate Armor. 
So boron nitrate armor. So this is made using cubic boron nitrate. And that is a whole crazy chain of things that we're gonna have to do. I think you put that from the crystallizer. So you have to make the boron nitrate solution, which comes from uh, a chemical reactor, the ammonium boric acid. And there's a whole chain of things. So we'll be taking a look at that here pretty soon. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and 10, 10, 10 these seeds and then we'll be back. Well, we now have a whole bunch of dredium ingots thanks to our 10, 10, 10 dredium seeds. So now we should be able to craft the upgraded version of this armor. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. And the leggings followed by the boots. Okay, so that is all of the different pieces. Awesome. So I think the old armor has some upgrades. These, I think this is the same upgrade, right? Resistance and speed. I don't think I'm getting saturation or night vision from this armor. I think that's just from my, my carrots. I like the way the armor looks, it's not bad. All right, um, so we're gonna go back to our normal armor though. Yeah, so the Dredium armor does seem to have, actually let's do it this way. The Dredium armor does seem to give you some buffs, which is pretty good, I think. All right, so now that we are back in our normal armor, that can sit right there and we can unbookmark these. So the boron nitrate that we were talking about before comes from this cubic boron and uh, in order to get that, we need the hexagonal boron. In order to get that, we need a crystallizer with a boron nitrate solution. So we're gonna need a crystallizer. And in order to make this, that has to come from a chemical reactor with ammonia and boric acid. And that comes from another machine. And <laughs> yeah, there's a long chain here. So boric acid comes from another chemical reactor with water and dye borane, I guess. And then that comes from another chemical reactor with hydrogen and molten boron, or boron 10 or 11, I guess. I don't think we need the specific isotopes of it. And then that comes from a melter. So then we need a melter. Like there's a lot of machines here. So pretty much what it looks like is we should make recipes for these different machines so we can start auto crafting them. So there's one for the melter. We need one for the chemical reactor. Actually, I might have some of these in here. Let's take a look. N uh, nucle nuclear craft, if I could spell it right. Uh, no, actually, I guess we never made any of the machines. Okay, so then we need one for a crystal laser as well. Awesome, and then we can throw those in here. And I know each of these is gonna have like smaller crafts to go with them, and we'll figure that out as we go. So I'll throw those guys into here. So if I want to make a melter, that requires us to have advanced plating, machine chassis, and servo mechanism. And I don't think any of these things are like that expensive, right? Ferro, boron, steel. Can we make ferro, boron seeds? It doesn't look like that. It looks like that is only gonna come from the alloy furnace, okay. Um, and then the advanced plating is tough alloy redstone and the basic plating, which we've done a lot of in the past. Uh, I don't know if there's anything here specifically that is crazy that we're gonna have to look at. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make the rest of these recipes off camera. Uh, reactor, casing, core, legacy, simple machine, chassis, electron plate. That's really not that bad. Soul machine, chassis, I think we can auto craft that. Plutonium, I'm not sure if we have done plutonium yet. And that looks like that cyanite filled with formic acid and cyanite is yellorium plus sand. Did we not get this formic acid from the herbis? I believe we've done this before. Uh, plutonium. Yeah, we have 48 plutonium, so we're good on that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of these recipes off camera, try and get all the machines that we need to get this going, and then we'll look at hooking up the whole chain to make the cubic, the cubic boron nitride. All right guys, so I've been busy, busy off camera here doing lots of different things and taking a lot of time doing them, but I'm gonna bring you guys back in so I'm not doing like everything off camera. Uh, I did re-hook up our metal presses. We took these down a while ago and then I decided to get applied energistics going on these guys so we can automate it. Now the real reason why I did this is specifically for the copper wires that we need here. 
That's one copper ingot turns into two copper wires. And these copper wires are used for something to make all this nuclear craft stuff. I think it was part of like the machine casing from Ender IO that's used as part. Anyway, uh, long story short, we had to hook this back up. So I got these going. I ran some AE wire here. So those two are connected together. Those two are connected together and they all run over to our magnetic craft line that we already had here before, right? So I didn't really have to run any cable specifically for this. I just connected it right on up. So yeah, we have our metal presses now automated, which is pretty good. Uh, the other metal press over here, I think we're going to be using for making plates. I noticed there was one specific plate that we had to make specifically on the metal press. And I don't remember exactly which one it was. There's a lot of plates in here. I'm trying to find it real quick. Like if we look for the metal press mold plate and I go to uses on it, it was this guy, black iron slate. So you can either do this on the crushing table manually, or you can do it on the metal press automatically. Those are your only two options. I think this is going to be changed in the future, but well, at least I hope it will. <laughs> but anyway, that's the reason why I got this metal press hooked up was specifically for this black iron slate which we're going to be needing in the future for some various other things. So anyway, so that's why I got this one hooked up. I don't have the metal press mold for it installed just yet, and it's not doing anything at the moment. Anyway, so now that we have that stuff hooked up, we have a lot of these machines made and yeah, trying to get uh, this nuclear craft thing going is quite the adventure. I'm trying to decide where I want to place this. This is like a big mess of machines that we have to hook up. And I, I don't think we can do it in a nice, neat little thing like this. Well, maybe we could, but yeah, I think we're just going to kind of lay this thing out. So essentially we want to make the cubic boron nitride and that comes from a pressurizer. So we need a pressurizer. Uh, you know what? I guess this particular machine, if we go back to this, this machine, we could probably hook up over here. Uh, I just had nuclear craft stuff. Or, yeah, right here. This machine we could put right here. That could be fine. And then to get that, we need the hexagonal boron nitride, which we get from the boron nitride solution. So we could put this together with everything. Maybe it's not worth it. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to put this over here for now. So that is the crystallizer for the cubic. And then we need to get ourselves the, oh, not that one, the crystallizer. So the crystallizer comes over here. So we push the fluid from this into here, and this makes the item that we want. And then from uh, the boron nitride solution, we need to have two different chemical reactors, one for ammonia, right? And then we need another one for the boric acid. So we got two different inputs here, two different chemical reactors. So we can kind of like split this a little bit. Actually, I think if we put it here and here, that might make more sense. So the output from this one, the output from this one go into here, and then that turns into the thing that we want. Uh, so then we got to figure out <laughs> if we wanted to make ammonia, that comes from liquid hydrogen, or I guess nitrogen and hydrogen. Um, so we have a couple different ways to make the hydrogen. We're going to use the electrolyzer from nuclear craft though. We input water, we get deuterium, oxygen, and hydrogen. So we'll just void both of these. I don't think we need those for anything in particular. And then the hydrogen gas, yeah, we'll put that into this machine over here. So let me grab the electrolyzer and that'll go right there. That needs to electrolyze water. Uh, okay, so that one's done, <laughs> and then let's see, back to the ammonia, and yeah, then we also need nitrogen going into that machine, and nitrogen is made from a nitrogen collector, which I forgot to make. Well, that should be relatively simple to do, nitrogen collector. I've been at this for a while, guys, I'm not joking, like, <laughs> advanced plating, we need four of these. Uh, I thought I had everything done. We need lithium. Do we have lithium at all? Uh, we do. We do. So the uses on, oops, that's a recipe. Uses on lithium. We can smelt it directly, pulverize it into two. 
Uh, is there lithium seeds? Should we look at doing that? Is there a way to get lithium? Aha! Okay, this might be something. So in order to do that, we need four blocks of lithium. So we need 36 lithium. How much lithium do we have? That is going to get us... That's enough. Okay, yeah. If we double the ore, which we should by putting into here, I will go ahead and make lithium seeds then. Uh, another thing to distract me. So we need 36 of that to turn into four blocks to make the lithium. So we never have to worry about farming that stuff again. All right, so I'll do that. Let's add that to our list. Lithium seed. And then we also wanted the nitrogen collectors. Add that to the list as well. Cool. So this guy requires a superium. And then the nitrogen collector require tough alloy, which we have recipes for. But that required the lithium here. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and work on that real quick. I'll 10, 10, 10 those seeds. Is there boron seeds? There are boron seeds. I might want to do those as well. Uh, I'm not sure what other, what other nuclear craft seeds there are if we need to make them. But I do know we're going to need a lot of liquid boron. And we don't have a whole lot of the stuff. So it makes sense for us to make seeds out of it. And the boron seeds requires us to have... Again, 36 boron to do that. Okay, well, I got some things I'm going to do real quick. More off-camera stuff. Be right back, guys. All right, guys, so a lot more off-camera stuff has happened. I went ahead and I made the lithium seeds, the boron seeds, and we have 10, 10, 10 them, so we have plenty of those materials. So I've laid out these machines as best to my knowledge as I can to try and auto-craft the cubic boron nitride. Uh, so our applied energistics line we have running off of this one over here because that was our closest P2P. So I just kind of ran that line over here and connected to the import off our crystallizer. And then we are also running to an interface here, which is going to provide, I believe, one boron ingot to kick off this whole thing. Now, as you can see here, there's no power. I haven't like tested any of this stuff. I've just been kind of going through these different items that we need looking at the conduits and doing all this kind of stuff. So the way that's going to work, we're going to put in a boron ingot. It's going to melt it, turning it into uh, 144 millibuckets of molten boron. That is going to go mix with hydrogen gas, right? So 144 millibuckets plus hydrogen gas equals the diborane. So that comes over to here. And then we have our electrolyzer here, which is taking water and going to convert it into hydrogen plus the other two items that we're going to be throwing away. And hydrogen is going to be coming into this machine here. So I have a filter on it on the whitelist. We're whitelisting hydrogen gas. We have another filter on this chemical reactor for the other side. I think that's for the ammonia. Uh, that's also taking hydrogen gas. And then we have a fluid trash can down here, which is blacklisting everything are blacklisting hydrogen gas, but accepting everything else. So like the uh, deuterium and whatever the other thing is. Anyway, so in this reactor, we should have the diborane. And then we want to take that and mix it with water to make boric acid. So out of this reactor, I have not put the conduit. That's kind of important. Let's do that. So out of this one, we're going to be extracting always active and inserting into here. So this should put the diborane plus water to make our boric acid. All right. So now that we have the boric acid, we need to mix it with the ammonia. And that's going to make our boron nitride solution. So out of this, we need to extract always active. And then this is going to be our ammonia side, extract always active. And then we're inserting into here, into our crystallizer, the boron. Actually, did I miss a step here? Mm, maybe I am missing another chemical reactor. Uh, boron nitride. Yes, I think I am missing. I absolutely am missing another <laughs> chemical reactor. Oh, this is why I want to like go through this before we finalize everything. So we need a chemical reactor that's going to take uh, the boric acid, mix it with the ammonia out of this one, turn it into the boron nitride solution. Yeah, this step right here. And then from here, the boron nitride carries on to a crystallizer and from that step we 
Uh, let's see here. The boron nitride that goes into the crystallizer to make the hexagonal boron nitride. And that goes over into our pressurizer to make the final form. Well, let me rearrange these. I need to add in one more chemical reactor. I thought I had an extra machine. Apparently, I just didn't follow through the steps properly. Uh, let me move these things over, get that one hooked up. We will add in our uh, conduit facades here to cover up the wiring and stuff. I do have a hiding machine here, a painting machine, I guess. Uh, oh, you know what? I think I already painted those, but because I'm holding this conduit, it shows that they are not painted. I think that's that's the deal here. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this hooked up properly, and then we'll give it a go, and hopefully we'll be able to make the items that we're looking for. Okay, so I got everything buttoned up underneath. And I just provided this with power and we are electrolyzing water at the moment. So we're making hydrogen gas, the deuterium and the oxygen. Looks like the hydrogen gas is going into our chemical reactor like it should, mixing with the nitrogen and we're making ammonia. And then over here we are full up on hydrogen gas waiting for this other process to go. Now I did add in the energy upgrade and speed upgrades into these two machines, but I haven't really added it into anything else just yet. They are a little expensive, uh, but anyway, whoop, I fall down that one hole. I have one hole open and I found it to fall down it. Let's fix that. Okay, so now if we take one boron, one boron ingot should kick off the rest of this, uh, melt, turn into all the other stuff, come over here and we should get our cubic boron. So let's try this and kind of follow the process along a little bit. Oh boy, that's going really slow. Let me go ahead and steal maybe like half of these. Okay, so that comes over to here. That is going to be making, well, let me steal these now. That's gonna be making our boric acid, I believe, and that's gonna come over here to make, or that's making our diborane. This is gonna make our boric acid. So again, I will steal these and put them here. And there's our boric acid. Oh, we got hydrogen gas. That is something I'm gonna have to get rid of. Okay, and then the ammonia is mixing with the boric acid here, and that's gonna make the boron nitride solution, which then should get turned into the hexagonal boron nitride, which then should turn into our cubic boron nitride. Ah, quite the process involved here. This is one of those things where you kinda of gotta go through GEI and be like, okay, I need this and this and this and this. And then even when you think you have everything, you forget that chemical reactor. Huh. Anyway, so this is just about done now. So that is the boron nitride. This is making water. We're gonna have to get rid of that. So that comes over here and then this is gonna take about forever. Uh, where's the stuff? This one, then we put those into here and then that'll do the thing. And that should get put over into this one, which is gonna pressurize it. Okay, so it looks like our whole chain is pretty much good. I do have to take care of two fluids. I need to make some more upgrades so this process goes faster. But other than that, I would say that we should be able to make this cubic boron nitride automatically. So my next task is to get the uh, max upgrades for all of these machines, uh, filter out those couple of fluids that we saw, and then we should be good. All right, so a couple of things to note. One boron ingot turns into two of the cubic boron nitrides, so I made the recipe accordingly. So one boron ingot equals two of those, right? And then uh, previously I had these infinite water sources here, which produce 20 millibuckets a tick of water. I upgraded to the water generator, and I think that's a much better deal. You can also upgrade these if you want to, to the compact infinite water source, and then even again to the dense one, but I think the uh, magnetic craft one is just the way to go. So that is what we are using here for both water inputs. Um, so if we want to do the cubic boron nitride, if we tell the system to make it, like this goes really fast now that we have all of the speed upgrades in there, like things are just going, uh, yeah, that's, that's it, we're done. So yeah, we got everything situated. I have the extra water and hydrogen being thrown away. I could probably take the water and repurpose it and the hydrogen repurpose it, especially for large recipes. We are waiting on the hydrogen to be made and things along those lines. But for our purposes right now, we got everything going. 
So at this point, I do believe we should be able to uh, take this armor and upgrade it. So let's see if we can do that now. This is the boron nitride helmet, then the chest plate, finally the leggings and the feet. Cool. So we have that all done. Quest complete. Give me my fanfare. <laughs> all right. Does this give us any special stuff? It doesn't. No special buffs from this armor. And it's it's a transparent armor. That's actually interesting. Yeah, you can see kind of through it. Hm. Yeah, nothing uh, super great about this armor, but it is the next armor that we made. Oh, it's not transparent when it's on the armor stand, but when it's on the player, it is. Huh, interesting. Well, yep, that is one more quest that we have done today. So I have made lithium seeds, boron seeds, we did the Supremium Crafting Seed and the Dreadium Seed today, so let's claim those. And then we also made ourselves the Dreadium Armor and the Boron Nitride Armor. So going forward, we have Infused Lava Armor, which I think is pretty easy to do. And then Dreadium Samurai, which I'm not sure about just yet. And I know this is going to require us to go to another dimension in the Abyssal Craft line to proceed. Um, the Infused Lava armor let's take a look at this so that requires the infused lava crystals i don't know how many of those we have infused lava not a whole lot but i do remember that these weren't super expensive to do you just put in a bucket of lava with the lava crystals and let them process so maybe we'll do that real quick and we'll end with this final armor all right so the last of our infused lava crystals just finished up so now we should be able to come over here take this armor off and upgrade it once again to this armor so this is the infused lava armor and i know for a fact that this has special buffs on it it gives you fire resistance when you have the entire set on and that one right there awesome so let's take a look at this armor all right well i mean it's armor <laughs> it's armor it gives you a decent amount of protection yeah it's not bad some armor toughness it's worth a lot emc wise apparently and uh yeah we get the fire resistance all the time on it i guess if that's something that you were worried about well there you go you get the fire resistance uh but yeah again we don't really need that in particular we're just going along our quest lines here, trying to get to like the Draconic Evolution armor, or maybe even the uh, Mystical Agriculture armor would be okay. The Dark Matter, Dark Steel stuff. Like this bottom, this bottom row down here is really where we want to be. Anywhere out of this section, I think is going to be pretty good for us though. Yeah, so we'll be looking at that sometime in the future. Maybe next episode we'll work on something else. I know we're doing armor for like the last uh, few episodes, but it is something that's pretty important for us to do. So that's why we've been doing it. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Bye-bye.